There's a celebrity in the house, everyone. There is a celebrity in the house, and she is with us. Introduce yourself, sweetie. Hello, everyone. I'm Carmarian D. Anderson Hyphen Harvey. The pronouns are she and her. They are required. I serve as the Alabama State Director for the Human Rights Campaign and have served almost two decades doing the work of public health in the Deep South, reducing stigma around HIV and other intersectional that impacts us as black, brown, rural areas that is living with this epidemic. We've known each other for a long, long, long time, time. Long time. So tell us more about the work that you're doing now compared to the work that you started in. Yeah, so I actually just bridged over. Mm -hmm. um, I'm now on the policy and legislation side. Um, that gives me an incredible opportunity to actually set the tables with the heavy hitters, those that are making the decisions, also those that are trying to punish because of their lack of knowledge. And so I have the opportunity to educate. In addition to that, I have the opportunity to also keep public health, HIV and stigma, part of my work plan in the state of Alabama, working from our national office to promote more health equity. And so by serving um, almost two mm -hmm. years as the co-chair of In the HIV Epidemic for Alabama mm -hmm. and all of the ASOs and CBOs are the community-based organization, a service organization, sit at mm -hmm. my table. They get a little money from me as well because it is important that we do this work collectively and not segregating because we need to make sure that the epidemic is going down in a deep southern state that is also considered a Bible Belt state. That leads me also to the opportunity where I'm mm -hmm. able to be able to contextualize as a clergy how we can still talk about sex and Jesus and reduce the stigma for people to be empowered because they're still having sex. Reverend, tell us about how you're bridging the faith community and the scientific community with this work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so one is, as a theologian, we need to contextualize mm -hmm. the hermeneutic scripture. So that's one. Number two, it is, it is important that we are empowered to have these conversations, not mm -hmm. just from a pulpit, Sunday school Bible study that we're having at home, um, not just on Thanksgiving and Christmas, but on those Sunday dinners mm -hmm. when we're gossiping on the phone. You know, we call it holy, but sometimes it's just gossip. Yes. But how we're bridging is, is that we're identifying those traditional fundamental pastors that now have seen clearly. Mark, in the book of Mark, it talks about now that you've been touched a second time, mm. don't go back to places yes. that actually kept you blind. And we have identified a couple of leaders, not just in Alabama and the South, our national office have brought those leaders together. We had our first convening in Birmingham, Alabama, where we are about to embark on writing curricula that is going to help pastors and leaders and health leaders to be able to dismantle the conversation around HIV, but increase it so we can help uh, reduce stigma. It will be language bearer testimonies, mm -hmm. um, sermon suggestions, and you just name it. So that's yes. one of the things that we're doing outside of us just still coming together to fellowship and intentionally having this conversation around sex and how it does impact if the lack of knowledge around protecting ourselves from the virus of HIV. And I'm excited about that. Yes. But how did you take church outside of the four walls? You know, it is important that most people in this generation are not coming in. I mean, we must go out. Mm -hmm. the, the, the full essence of a church is not so much for us to come together. That's a fellowship opportunity. Forsake to assemble yourself among believers. We get strength there. Discipleship, we go out mm -hmm. and we choose to witness the good news. And the good news is life. And so if there is someone who is impacted by HIV, the good news is, is I can use a scripture to say the sickness is not unto death. But it is for God's glory. And it's important that that mm -hmm. individual knows that mm -hmm. they are not going to die in in essence, it is a beauty because you're walking around and healing and only the creator can do that mm -hmm. because the creator already knew. And so it is important that we take it out of the four walls, just like ASOs and CBOs. They go out with their prevention services. Mm -hmm. We must also do the same thing if we're going to proclaim and allow everybody to come in under the same fold of healing. I love you. Oh, I my God. You. I love the work that you're doing Thank in the you. South. And you decided to stay in the South yes. and continue this work, which is so needed Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Any parting words about your work, our SOS conference, and the work that you are still called to do? Absolutely. So as a, a leader and as a, someone who's an elder by transition and now by age in the trans-identified community, it is also important that we also contextualize and understand that the language that we're writing still in public mm -hmm. health may not get to all the hard-to-reach places. It is important that your table is so diverse and we have new emerging leaders that need to be sitting at the table. Mm -hmm. I am often used, but I'm easy, I am one of the ones that don't mind giving up my seat because everybody voice is going to be very important in order for us to attack and combat HIV. So it's important that visibility, 
the DEI, as we call it, mm -hmm. don't tokenize, be intentional and use their voices in their narrative. Um, and then also pay them for their service and their testimony that they're giving you. So it will then be a seed where they can continue doing that even when they're not sitting at your table. Tell us more about compensation, yeah. people being how yeah, to do this? Absolutely. So in public health, you know, in, in, in you know, and, and from a form of, of, of research, you know, mm -hmm. it's called seeding. We give initiative incentives. But the important thing of compensating someone's voice can look various ways mm -hmm. is is that sometimes it is monetary. But have you really found out are they negotiating, um, trying to find a job but versus they need to also have a roof mm -hmm. over their head? Mm -hmm. That's compensation. Mm -hmm. How do we make it a greater partnership mm -hmm. in order for their wholeness? So compensation to me is providing whatever they need in that mm -hmm. season at that time for their wholeness so they can feel that they are being um, um, supported to their next dimension, but not just continue showing up, pouring mm -hmm. out, and we're not pouring back into them um, as we do others that are um, not of the transgender community. So it's very important knowing that the data, we are still high risk mm -hmm. along with mm -hmm. our cis identified women. So it is time that we be creative, but intentional how we offer compensation incentives to this mar deep marginalized community because we are growing, but we're still yet being impacted. And finally, what do you do to get away? Even Jesus went to the aisle yeah. and rested. Yeah. What? So we just self care. Yeah. Do you offer it to others I and do. to yourself? Because yeah, we yeah. have to. We as clergy have to yeah. preach to ourselves yeah. sometimes. You know, the important thing is, is the first thing I, I am promoting is self care. De de defining self care from each individual is going to be different. Mm -hmm. I may not have the luxury like some of my other colleagues in my social network to be able to go take a trip and do all that. So we have to negotiate, but mm -hmm. still take the self care. So for me in my profession, I become an introvert. When I don't have to be around people, I can curl <laughs> up on my couch, I can make a good meal, and I can binge on CSI and all law and order and all those things yes. that's going to keep my wheels and my mind turning. Um, but there's hobbies that I have um, as well. And so even Tell though, me. Yeah. So so my first Tell degree us. is culinary. So exactly. I love to cook. Yes. Um, I love to read, but I love watching movies that is going to help me visualize and recontextualize because what I'm watching, the world is watching, mm -hmm. and we can use those as examples to really make our message even more greater to understand the impact of whatever is instilled in us as the messenger to the world. I love you. You're doing such fabulous Thank work. You. Continue to do it. And congratulations Thank you. on transitioning into policy and advocacy. Thank congratulations you so much. for that. Appreciate it. All right. Much love. Mm -hmm.